fodder's a bit overpriced. Cows cost 6,000 G, which is a thousand more than last time. I can't help but feel like they're overpriced. And chickens are a thousand G more than last time. And with eggs being less than a hundred G, considering how long it takes for a chicken to pay for itself, the chickens are definitely overpriced. At least you don't need a bunch of grass planted or fodder to buy animals now. But it's practically impossible to buy multiple animals in a day, unlike last game, because Doug insists on going to your farm right away to bring you the first one, and then he'll say he's closing up shop. Cutting grass does not give you chicken feed as well as fodder, unlike in all of the previous games. This game arbitrarily separates the two feed, meaning that you are forced to always buy chicken feed. I looked up chickens and it told me that if you put your chicken outside, it'll feed itself. The chicken will only be happy the next day if there's a wooden fence around it. Somehow. But I never bother with that. I hate that you can't go the second digit immediately when trying to buy chicken feed, and have to instead hold up for a long time to get to 10. The coop doesn't even have a place where you take feed out of it to put it in the bins. It's not that big a deal. But it's very strange, requiring you to go into your menu again and equip it and wait through a load time. It's way faster than having to go into the menu and equip chicken feed one at a time, repeatedly, every day, like you have to do with fodder. So it's awesome that I can just go from the left side to the right in one go. Good thing the game has 8 slots for your tools, so that it doesn't matter that you always have chicken feed in your inventory. I love the convenience that you don't have to feed mere chicks. So far that's never been the case. But they can do it at any time and then you never know when they're gonna do that. You don't just walk through chicks like in Harvest Moon JVC. So that's annoying. You don't have to pick up chickens every day to raise their affection because the eggs are always worth the same amount. You'll have to pick them up anyways because the coop is so cramped. You have to get them out of your way all the time. But at least the coop isn't as cramped as it was in the last game. The level design in the barn and coop is glaringly bad in the sense that you always have to face diagonally to feed the animals. So one time I accidentally wasted chicken feed because it turned out that I faced the same stall again. This game is just so obsessed with its isometric camera angle. We get it, you're 3D, but guess what? Super Mario RPG had an isometric camera angle and it was on the Super Nintendo but you didn't see Harvest Moon Super Nintendo having that camera angle. Just because I activated the dream text with Mary last night, going into the library caused her to have an event where it turns out my character was the one who gave her a book she had a long time ago. Because apparently you knew her and the old lady as a kid, which just confused and detached me from the protagonist since I'm just finding out about this and I thought he had no history with this town until he came there, which is more relatable. And then time skipped to 5 p.m so I couldn't give anyone a gift. You shouldn't be punished for getting our faction up. And every bachelorette has a cutscene where they get a hurt ankle. And I was confronted with two options, carry her or get help. I stay stated here because realistically, you might not be able to carry her to where she wants to go and just look weak and fall with her. Or she might think it's embarrassing. The rival for her carried her. It's also distractingly unrealistic and immersion breaking that when a bachelorette does get a sprained ankle, they're magically fine again the next day. Why would your character ask the rival for help anyways? I would have liked getting to see her fall out of the tree, because it would have been funny slapstick against someone so easily offended that she tells Kai, Don't compare me to a wine barrel, when he said she was lighter than one. That should have been a compliment. And Kai was helping her. I hate that the typhoons get rid of some of your grass. Combine that with the bullshit that apparently you can't plant grass in the fall in this game. As you can tell because of the lack of grass seeds. Every bachelorette has their hard events go on the same structure. So all of them have an event where you visit them in their bedroom when they're sick. And you somehow aren't able to give her a gift that day. It was disappointing that she only says one line. When she's sick in bed, her heart icon isn't there. This game introduced birthday presents, but you only get a birthday present from the one girl that likes you the most. You'd only know that's from a guide, 
but the lucky bracelet makes there be a 90% chance of sunny weather instead of 80% like usual. And you only get it from Karen. It's something that's only going to bother you if you read a guide and find out about the birthday presents. I was incensed that when I carried an herb into my farm after buying a cow, the cow naming scene had my herb being visible and it vanished from my inventory. The reason I'm feeding the cows is because I naturally assumed that in a 3D game, calves would need food this time. So the problem is the game not telling you about not needing to waste food on them. I don't want to hit a cow with my tools 15 times just as a cheap way of maximizing its affection. It would take three days of taking care of a cranky cow to get to get milk again after that. The bells on the necks of the cows look so similar in color to their mouths that the cows look like they constantly have their mouths agape because the bells blend right into their mouths. Cows can get accidentally pushed and then end up walking out of the barn on their own. On two days in a row. Do I have to do this every day? If that's not bad enough, the ranching has a little slowdown in it once you get nearly eight cows. The game will fail to register if button presses half the time. The cows can still clip into each other. Taking care of animals has the same problems as the previous games. If you press A in front of the fodder storage while holding fodder, you will destroy the fodder instead of simply putting it back in the storage, like would be realistic. This is worth mentioning because it's inevitably going to happen because the slowdown makes you mash A to get results. If you use the medicine not close enough to the cow, you don't waste it, even though you still sit through an animation. That doesn't make up for the fact that you have to buy medicine one at a time and you can only have one medicine at a time once again. Which is back to being a huge problem, considering that it takes way more time in the day than one hour this time to go to the animal shop and back. So if a bunch of your animals are sick at once because of the typhoon, you're not going to be able to heal all of them. The cows take two less days than it does in the previous game for a cow to produce milk after you buy it. 21 days. This applied to the previous games too, but you'd think the animals would eat fodder regardless of what stall it was in, if they didn't have any fodder in their own stall. But they don't. It's really awesome that if cows enter the happy condition, any interaction with them gives them even more affection than usual. And they're immune to getting sick for three days. But there's an only 15% chance of them becoming happy, and it's only if you put them out to graze. Which you're never gonna do, because it takes forever. On the bright side, I love, love, love the fall music for this game. And the place where you go foraging has its own separate theme anyways, so you don't even get to hear it that much. There's no flowers in the fall, when a lot of the characters like them. While I love that this game has eggplants as a multi-harvest crop finally, I was baffled to learn that eggplants were the only fall crop. When the Dorador -door salesman offered to give me super high-grade chicken feed, I was drawn to savvy enough to look him up, learn that it was a scam, and turn him down. It's really mean and stupid for the programmer to waste his time programming the salesman into the game that offers you nothing but scams. On some level I can appreciate it because there are scam artist salesmen in real life, so it's good to teach kids a lesson about that, but surely they would have seen it on television before having to deal with it in real life. Apparently he can offer to give you soap, but he doesn't and you wasted your money. It doesn't make any sense that he wouldn't give you the product you paid for. The feed almost tricks you into falling for it because he says it'll make your chickens lay golden eggs. Which were a thing in the Game Boy Color game. This guy is disappointing on two levels. One, since text boxes don't tell you the name of the person talking in this game, I was expecting Mary to show up. Second, at first the salesman looked like a stereotypical witch. But no, that'd be too interesting. Instead, it's a man. Well, that's interesting on its own, but not what I really wanted. So one of all people is not a recycled character. This guy's a better design than him. Another thing that sucks 
is that when you turn him down, he keeps talking to you. And the text in this game scrolls at molasses speed. I'd hate playing this game legitimately without the ability to speed it up. And then when you turn him down a second time, he talks again. It's such an unfair newbie trap. Even if you have an idea that the feed's not going to be that great because he's excited about it, you might buy it anyways because the whole point of playing a Harvest Moon game is to buy everything in the game. So you'd think you'd at least get something interesting. On my first playthrough, it took until late fall for me to get the gold watering can. Wouldn't it be awesome if there was an even better watering can after this? There isn't. I can't put lumber down on the cut grass. On fall 22nd, the head carpenter went to my house asking me to come build a bridge with him tomorrow. Fortunately, he told me he'd pay me, but I just have to hope he'll pay me more than the amount I would sacrifice by going there. Your character works for him automatically, which defeats the purpose of having this be a part of the game. It is a boring waste of time cutscene instead when I'd feel more satisfied doing that myself and earning the cash. But at least it's more convenient than having to do it. He gets the lumber somehow without destroying the tree stump in front of him. He just hits it and keeps having to go back to the same stump. The work was only until 3, and it's far from the only day where you're doing something like this. Cool, even more cash. This is the kind of part-time work that I would like to be able to do with a lot more villagers, so I could have an actual bond with them formed and strengthened. The next day, he told me to hit something with a hammer, when it didn't look like that did anything. This green-shirted guy is ugly, and his fellow carpenters aren't lookers either. I can see why these guys didn't carry over to friends in Mineral Town. Aw, the next cutscene is just the hammer thing again. He doesn't even hit anything with it. He just used it on the ground. It's not like he's doing anything productive with it. There's an awesome glitch, where if you befriend a woman so much that you get a special event from her the day before the first day of winter, and you have to stay up really late, then you'll end up being pushed to the second day of winter and your crops will still be there from autumn. An easy way to befriend a woman enough is to repeatedly show care in your dog when the dog doesn't like you much. So I have to do that. There's no reason I should have to put up with not being able to grow crops in the winter again. The Game Boy Color Harvest Moon 1 let you grow crops in the winter. It's so lazy to have a black screen instead of animating the dreams. The text with Karen's event is overly dark. I'm in freaking winter and still only have small milk. There's apparently no makers in this game. Which means it takes longer to make enough money to buy everything. But it's more fun to not have to do an extra thing every time you're ranching, just for a little bit more profit every time. Cows produce golden milk when they win the cow festival. I remember rejecting Karen's love on the beach earlier on and being annoyed at what a bitch she was. She somehow thinks she's a catch. It makes perfect sense that a drunk is associated with a vineyard. Why did they change that in Friends of Mineral Town? She showed me where they make the wine and we somehow got locked in the wine cellar. It's terrible writing that it wasn't told how they got locked in there. Eventually, after an eternity of walking to wall smashing A, I figured out that you exit it from the top floor by pressing A on the northern wall somewhere, behind something. When I retried the event to choose differently from the dialogue tree, I still forgot where to go to escape. It's so unintuitive that it's forgettable. It skips time ahead when it's over. It's so cheesy that out of nowhere, Karen reveals that it was your character as a kid who rescued her from the wine cellar she got trapped in. That's how she knew to escape. It is good design to have the right answer be the one you'll most likely pick by accident. And that's usually the case in hard events. I probably don't remember to compliment it every time because that's the game doing what's supposed to do. The Blue Feather is only a thousand G, which feels like a bargain compared to other games. But it was annoying that Rick said, I must have plans. It was a pleasant surprise that his wife, Mary, says she does weeding for me. But your wife helping is useless because by that point in the game, there's nothing to spend money on anyways. She only does this for you a third of the time anyways, because somehow they even screwed that up. What next? 
Are they gonna have what the wife does for you be entirely dependent on which wife you marry? It's so weird that it's impossible to go into the kitchen to get your wife a gift when it's a typhoon. Don't talk to your character's wife when she's standing in front of a table full of meals. She'll ask you what day it is, and you have four options. You'll never know which one to pick. I thought Anna disappeared from the game after you married Mary for the longest time because I could never find her in the mayor's house. But it turns out she becomes a new librarian, without you being told about it for some reason. Why does your wife in this game quit her job when you marry her? Why would they give up their dream? It's sad. Like how Gotz's wife was the queen of dance and traveled the world until she got married. At least she says that of course she doesn't regret marrying him and that he gave her a warm hand in house. It is easy to interpret it as an abusive household because Gotz is ill-tempered. And it turns out he locked Karen in the wine cellar when she was a kid. At one point, every time I tried to go into the barn or leave the farm, the game hung on a black screen. Fortunately, resetting the game made that not happen to me anymore. My dog got stuck in the stairway for the longest time, past the loading zone where I'd be able to pick him up. Why is it impossible to destroy the boulder on the frozen lake no matter how much you hit it with the level 2 hammer without charging it up? Mining sucks worse than I ever thought it would. I took so long to talk about it because I barely played it. You have to ask permission from this carpenter in the cave to use a hoe around a tiny square floor with nothing else to do, where you only get to descend if you were lucky enough to find the hole before time runs out. How would falling down it not hurt? You're told that at 5pm, or when you run out of stamina, you'll get automatically taken out of the mine. Mining would be even more boring and stale than usual if every time you loaded up a floor you always got stuff from the same areas. Instead it keeps surprising you. But it's annoying that you're forced out of the mine after you're not even halfway done tilling the floor you're on. But the real problem that absolutely ruins mining, that makes all of these seem like nitpicks in comparison, is how god-awfully slow it is. It's soul-drainingly boring. There's a noticeable delay every time you till the soil and want to move forwards and till again. What also drags things out is you're arbitrarily not allowed to till multiple tiles at once. Why not? Why is that always a thing in the mines? It's just so boring that I never want to do it again. Every time you dig up an item, you can't simply get it and immediately put it away. You get a text box reminding you of what the item is called, and have to wait for your character putting it away. And there's a slight delay before you can go back to doing stuff. I was baffled that I couldn't eat Pontata Roots. Isn't it bad enough that you can only access the mine in the winter for no reason at all? Wouldn't feel so bad if you had to walk across a frozen lake just to get to it. How do you ever know that you have to give Sibera a blue rock to get one of his mistakes. I love that Lillian sells every seed all year once you get the greenhouse. Except the moondrop flower ones for no reason. So better buy 10 for the lottery before summer. It's sad that this makes story seasons look bad when this is literally the first game with the greenhouse in it and already did it better by letting you have access to every seed. And you can plant any seeds and seed alongside each other in the greenhouse. No spring sun mode. And I bet there's way more room for planting in the greenhouse than the other games. So much tilling to do. Typhoons have a 25% chance of destroying your greenhouse. The one that's a pretty big accomplishment. Why can't Lillian just sell the strawberry seeds right away? Why can they only be grown in the greenhouse? I was expected to show up tomorrow to help build a hot spring. So that's more money. And the hot spring bridge get built even if you don't help them. You just hop in and out automatically. So I can only guess that means I have to hop into it over and over again to restore myself to full. Oh, never mind. According to a guide, you can only use it to restore 10 measly fatigue points once a day. Oh my god, the hot spring permanently gets rid of some of the stumps and forgeable items from the game. Wow, that's bad design. According to a guide, you're only able to get the fatigue restoring power from the bathroom 
once a day as well. The hot spring door is needlessly small and requires facing a diagonal direction to interact with. So sometimes you'll waste time mashing the A button and not being able to interact with it for a while. You're not going to get all the power berries without a guide, unlike in the previous game. I do like the idea that the game makes use of flowers like this. You actually have a reason to plant something other than the cash crops. Instead of having to hope you fish up a power berry off the dock, which is far more about luck than skill, why can't the power berry be a reward for befriending villagers? Isn't it bad enough that the blue power berry doesn't do anything? And the effect for it is actually from the red power berry you get from him? It sucks that you need to throw a large fish into the copper pond that doesn't look magical at all between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. when you really have to think about it to figure out what time of the day it is. I bought the Blue Mist flower seed, and when I left the store, Popery automatically talked to me and dragged me over to the Goddess Pond area to plant them, and told me to water it every day or it would die. Good thing it only requires one use of the watering can with no charging up, as it's just one flower. But would it die because of a typhoon? That'd be dumb, you can't prevent that. I love that there's a glitch where if you water one of the regular flowers in this place, it starts the Blue Mists quest, and then you can just exit and re-enter multiple times in the same day, and have it be fully grown immediately. Getting Popery's photo is needlessly obtuse, because it looks like you're done with the Blue Mist flower, because it's bloomed. How are you supposed to know that you have to keep watering it until a butterfly shows up? Some NPCs give you recipes if you give them specific food-related gifts. A few of them have to like you enough. In Sasha's case, Gots has to like you enough. So you're not going to know that. You're not going to know any of the requirements for recipes. None of them tell you the steps to making the recipe. You'll just have it in your recipe list when you get access to it. You press every button over the recipe, but it never tells you what to do. You can collect recipes, but you can't make them. Actually, that's good, because cooking one item at a time to make them sell for better will destroy the pacing of the later games in the series, and all that boredom isn't really worth making a little extra money that you would have made eventually in not that much time, so there's no hurry. I kind of find it fun following the guide to get the recipes, but I don't find it fun when the recipes require ingredients that I don't have because it's not the right season. It's bad enough that you'll never think to give them a certain item without a guide. The game never tells you that you can only get a recipe if you're giving the first gift to an NPC that day. Which sucks because that person would probably not be the first person you're gifting if you're even trying to get recipes. So you take forever to get the recipe or never get it. The guide said I would get mushroom rice recipe from a normal carpenter. But instead I had to get it from the head carpenter. At least some of the NPCs are really quick to fully befriend. Of course, you need to look up the glitches wiki to know these exploits. Just talking to May a ton in one day will max her out. You can get Jeff to max affection if you tell him Ellie's just your friend and leave and come back to repeat the process. He only asks if Ellie's at 130 affection. And it's easy not to know how to find Ellie on Sundays at all. And you can give the head carpenter multiple gifts a day. There's no limit on the amount of affection boost the head carpenter gets from gifts. Kent's affection always increases when you talk to him holding a wild animal or chicken. If you repeatedly show Gots a baby that isn't Karen's, you'll max out his affection in 120 times. The same applies to Doug. The sprites on the right, in this smaller cave, will receive affection for gifts until his total affection's at 21. Here's another glitch. If you're in the hot spring when the clock hits 6 a.m. and try to sleep, it crashes the game. If you're holding something when talking to Popery to get her photo, the game crashes when the photo's taken. That's a lie. I can't give a gift to her at all. I love that Ellie tells you what gifts she likes to get if you talk to her. Every NPC should do that. But of course, by the time she started saying this stuff, I'd already looked up what she loves anyways online because I decided to start befriending her in the first place. 
I liked Mary when I saw the event where she got a grasshopper off Karen and made a forced socially awkward faux pas by saying it looks like her and offending her. She was mean to her and took off. It was frustrating that only then did Mary explain that she meant that its antenna looked like her hair. That's what she would have said in the first place then. But at least she's more than just a librarian who likes bugs by being socially awkward too. Well, it's cute to see them being friends. It's good that Anne tells you she loves corn at the vegetable festival. Okay, the stairway literally just lets you walk on the roof. What was the point of that? And why does my dog appear outside after the carpenters are done something? I miss Popery's dream event. Apparently, you only have a week after that text shows up to go to the goddess pond and get the cutscene to happen with her. That's unrealistic. Nothing should ever be lost forever in a video game. Like, you can't restore the vineyard if it's past year one fall. And to restore the vineyard, you need to look up a guide. Apparently, you have to give Duke the bartender tons of blueberries, and only then will he decide to make a specific one. And you have to have a friend at the Harvest Sprite so they'll talk about it. How was I supposed to know any of that? That's unfair. I had to start a new game to get Kai married because it somehow requires the vineyard's big tree to be revived. And somehow you can only get the bartender to give you the wine for that in the first year. And again, I somehow saw none of Kai's rival events. Even though I went to the vineyard every day. I do love that Kai develops on his backstory. He says he has a lot of brothers. I think I like him a bit more than the Friends of Mineral Town one. There's a bright side to every event being basically the same for the girls. It shouldn't bother me too much that Cliff randomly told me he was marrying Anne in the morning. Because it didn't actually miss anything. But I know why they hate the rivals in Japan now. Sure, you have to befriend the Bachelor first. But still, I didn't even see two of the rival heart events. Well, it's convenient if you actually want a rival to get married. It's confusing. The rival events with Anne and Cliff, they just have Anne being mean to him. Gray's a douche, and even befriending him doesn't do much to endear him to you, because you can only get a consistent chance to befriend him in the barn or field. He gives you a dialogue tree, and he's an ass to you no matter which option you pick. Rick's not a rival for anybody. He's going to be sad and alone his whole life. While well, Jeff, who keeps referring to Ellie as Little Ellie and says he knew her when she was a little girl, and is her boss, the guy who was Karen's father in Friends of Mineral Town, is the rival for Ellie. Well, that's a bit creepy. They should have had Rick be Ellie's love interest. Jeff even has facial hair, which is usually something that isn't an eligible bachelor thing in these games. Okay, it's bad enough that Cliff says his wife scolds him every day. I talked to him in the barn today and he said, Oh, this? I had a fight with my wife last night. Anne is an abusive lover in this game. Holy shit. Talk about character assassination. He should have left town. I didn't see any of Jeff's heart events either. It doesn't make sense that the rival events wouldn't happen after they got married because nothing about the rival events ever involves the two of them being more than friends. The fact that your wife can randomly decide to crate up the eggs is a big problem when you're trying to befriend Grey because you can only befriend him with eggs. Although usually you won't try to do that. The festivals are painful because the text scrolls so agonizingly slowly, even with speed up. And yes, the item you're holding does disappear forever when you enter a festival holding it. Why are you never able to give people gifts in festivals? At first, I was enraged with the Flower Festival because even though I voted for Mary in the ballot in the square the other day, Karen was made the Flower Festival Queen, and I was forced to dance with her! Sure, it makes sense in universe that your vote isn't the only one that counts, but it's a video game! So the game picks at random who the Flower Queen is. Shouldn't they have known it'd make you reset the game until you get the right result? You get the bottle by buying it from Rick in the Flower Festival, of all things. That's dumb. Why can't Rick sell me the bottle all year? At least you can buy the bottle from multiple festivals. They shouldn't have a shady guy like the door door salesman selling you the power berry, because it makes you suspicious. At least it's only a thousand G. 
It doesn't make any sense that he would only sell this here at the flower festival. And two, why won't he sell power berries all the time if he's able to get his hands on them? And why can't Lillian sell pink cat flower seeds all the time if she can get her hands on it? It makes her money. And they shouldn't have the power berry be restricted to a festival you probably won't go to because you go to bed every time you go to them. Couldn't the people who made this game have made it possible to go to the festivals at night too? I had to redo the entire 23rd day multiple times. The goddess only dances with the king. At least I was able to tell Mary the flower outfit looks good on her. But she says I'm just saying that to be nice. Her saying she's embarrassed just makes the player feel bad about voting for her because she doesn't depreciate it. Why does the tax scroll automatically when you're watching fireworks? I just talked to Mary once and the tax started scrolling without me getting a chance to see what everyone else said first. And then the game went to black and my character said today was a good day without allowing me to go home and chip stuff first. In the vegetable festival. Gourmet says the veggies are très bien delicious. So, very well delicious? That makes no sense. And neither does the fact that you can restart the conversation about picky eating by accidentally talking to Stu and Kent again. It should tell you why you won. Too bad the reward for the vegetable festival isn't a power berry. I guess the villagers like me more. The Sea Festival is a horrible button masher. Good luck winning that for the worthless prize at the end. How's the Egg Festival? I assumed it was a festival where you brought one of your eggs to the plaza and won a prize. I wish you could see the look on my face when I read about this festival. It was a what the fuck? This is stupid expression. The villagers have to bring back a certain colored egg that the mayor showed. You don't just see the eggs in town and immediately know it's the right color, which would speed up the pacing of this instead of forcing you to wait through a slow text box every time. And I lost one of them when I was holding the egg he wanted. The game's got a timer, and you have to do this shit to get a power berry. Look, Kai says about the minigame, what a confusing mess. But when your minigame is so bad that the people making the dialogue have one of the characters in the game call it a mess, Maybe the programmers should have made the game more fair. It's unacceptable enough that your character goes to bed automatically after every single festival. Well, at least you can choose to dance with a girl. And it's not a minigame it might screw up. I love that the game designers actually cared enough to make the characters actually dance impressively. It's not like it's a 3DS game where the characters do nothing but stand there every festival. After the dancing ended, my character forced me to go to bed, when I hadn't watered my goddamn crops yet. This made me do the entire day all over again. Why does anybody defend this game? Why does anybody say this is a great game? I can't remember any other game in the series that made me redo a day that many times. I can't believe they screwed up the horse race so bad. What is this bullshit that participants cannot buy medals for betting? So what is the point of racing then? You're supposed to press A a lot, and you're not allowed to do it too much because for no reason your horse has a stamina meter. Why can't I just get my horse to run into carrots and put his stamina back up and give it a boost of speed? It's just I'm running a straight line to the finish line. There's no grass to avoid or anything. It's so lazy. I was incensed to see that there's prizes to win, like a new stable for no reason, that I should have just been able to buy from the carpenter's shop, and a carrot and something else. I thought I was done with this game. There's a glitch where you can bet for free by pressing B to say no. So that's awesome. I'm not entering my dog though. Participants can't bet. Luck-based missions aren't good game design like the other games surrounding it. I can't talk to the horse anymore now that it's all grown up to raise its affection. Which is ultimately good because the pacing is faster, but you could have simply raised his affection simply by mounting him in the first place. So when I decide to care, I'll have to remember to use the brush. It doesn't even seem faster than just walking when you ride it, so it seems to literally only be there for the horse race. Either that, or it's just slow because it doesn't have enough hearts yet. 
In the original game, the horse didn't have an affection score. In the Game Boy Color game, the horse didn't move nearly as much as this. It moves all over my farm, so it's barely where I want it. It could run away from you at any time. And it makes it harder to ship with it successfully. Cool, the saddlebags are free. Your horse gets them just by growing up. Selling animals requires you to go to your farm right away to pick an animal, so you'll never have time to sell more than one. Clearly this is stupid compared to the last game. When you go to sell your animals, he somehow throws his voice from all the way at the entrance of your farm to tell you the price. It seems that selling animals lowers the affection of the other animals. Isn't it primitive that each animal will only eat from one feeding stall? Doug goes home if it gets too late. So you actually have a time limit to sell your animals or get the animal. No wonder he says, no, 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 we're closing up shop. It's to decrease your chances of this happening to you. Compared to the previous game, having the evaluation on year three, spring 30th is pretty merciful. It's too late, actually. Because by that point, you already bought everything. So you would have sold all your animals by that point. They really didn't playtest how late they would have the evaluation. Its idea was punishing bad players. But you're not bad for playing like that by that point. You're being smart by not wasting time. If I hadn't looked up a guide, I never would have known that the evaluation was going to happen. Considering that I went past the first year without it happening. It's intimidating and weird when your character's father shows up. It was really satisfying and heartwarming seeing all the villagers compliment me. So in summary, this game's worse than the previous ones in literally every way, with the only advantage over the previous game being that you can marry somebody. And the process of getting married is always boring and repetitive. I actually like playing the game most of the time. But I had a way better experience on my second playthrough, and that's mainly because I used the Game Shark code to turn off the fatigue system. It really feels like a broken game when you're constantly forced to waste an entire day in bed. I'm usually okay with the game, though the missed button inputs are a constant annoyance. The only things I outright despise about the game are the festivals and the stupid fatigue system. This might be the worst classic Harvest Moon game ever made. It does literally every gameplay style a little bit worse than the previous games. There's no sprinkler, so watering takes longer. And among other things, it's easy to push cows out of the barn by accident. I know this is some people's nostalgic fan favorite, because they played it as kids before all the other games that vastly improved on its foundation. But knowing that's popular makes the problems of the game even more annoying for me. It has to be because of nostalgia that people love this game. There's other games you can play where you can get married, so you can pass in this one. It aged really poorly, lacking tons of necessary anti-frustration features and basic game mechanics.